Okay, this is Cool Dude Clem here. Well, this is the stuff on his shelf. Oh wait, I've already done that joke. Anyway, that's not what the subject of today's video is going to be about. Because the subject of today's video is... An update on my audio system. And something's fallen over, but I don't care. Well, as you can see, if you saw the last video on the audio setup, you can see a lot has changed. Still got the record deck and the Vestafire 8-track, I mean, multi-track cassette recorder. But where's the reel-to-reel, -reel, you ask? Well, that's down here. And don't worry, it's still connected up. It's just that when I moved everything around, I didn't have any more space to put this thing in, so I had to put it down there. I think I better start with the reel-to-reel, -reel, just to show you that that's still on and everything. Come on. You do want to play now, don't you? Oh, still got the pause on. Now it's time for a new episode of Clement's series. Today is episode The Jane Phone. Sorry, you cannot see it very well. Alright, I've got my new Jane phone installed now. The special phone that sounds like Jane when it rings and uh, <laughs> only connects to Jane's phone. At don't the ask. This is me She's being silly. In any second now. Well, that's enough of that anyway. So, that what you heard was playing through my tube amplifier, which I've got on the top of this thing. Now, this thing is also an amplifier, but I'm not actually using this as an amplifier. I've actually made a lot of modifications to this. So, this now has many inputs and outputs, including a line output, which is fed into this thing, this tube amplifier here. This is my tube amplifier that I made. Nice little stereo amplifier. It uses a ECC83 as the input tube or valve, depending on what you want to call them. I think in Yankville they're called the 12XA7, but that's a nice little dual triode. And then a couple of beam tetrodes as the output tubes. These are actually 6L6 clones. They're Russian clones. You might be able to read what it says on the front of the tube there. That is, if the camera would focus on it, which it appears that it's not going to do. Maybe if I put my hand there. Well, you can sort of make it out, but you know. With the valve amplifier, you might notice that there's no transformer there. So you're probably wondering, well, how are the speakers connected without a transformer? Well, the truth of the matter is, there is a transformer, which I've mounted to each speaker, as you can see right here. It's not the ideal transformer for the thing, but it gets the job done. That be a mighty fine piece of redneck engineering. Another piece of redneck engineering right here, this little display panel that I found on something. So I can see what the temperature is, what voltage is going into it, and it also has a light. If I plug that in there, as you can see, although the voltage drops down quite considerably because power supply I've got connected to that is just not cutting it. Especially because it's powering this thing as well which looks really dusty on the camera. I don't know why. It doesn't look like that in real life. So, we've talked about this. We've talked about this. So, um, what's this great big fat thing then? Well, you know I like tape. Well, this thing may look like a CD player, but it's not. Because I like formats where you can record over or erase tracks that you don't want and you don't have to finalize after you've recorded and also there's very little music that I actually like on CDs anyway so uh, I mean I have had do have a few CDs and a CD player but I rarely listen to them anyway this thing is actually a digital audio tape recorder a lot of people might not be familiar with this format 
because it's mostly for professional use. In fact, this is a professional machine. And let's just take a little look at the tapes this uses. And there we go, this is a digital audio tape. As you can see, it's absolutely tiny. It's about the size of a micro cassette or a mini cassette. Except, of course, the sound quality is about a thousand times better. So let's give that a little listen to. So I'll put the tape monitor to on and tape B so we can hear it. Don't criticize me for my taste in music. And there we go. Also, I forgot to mention balance does its thing, so does volume, treble and bass as well. Yeah, I had to find something that wouldn't get me nabbed for copyrights, that's why I played that. Some people are probably going to say, what was the song you used? 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 Well, if that happens, I'll put it in the comments, but... Anyway. Some music I found off YouTube. So that brings us to the stuff over here now. I've got my Vestafire multi-track cassette recorder. Let's just select it. The goon show in there at the moment. Crazy radio show. Strange thing is, that's exactly how mornings sound to me. Even when there's not a lot of whole bunch of people around. And another thing I forgot to mention, of course, is that the way I've got this, the way I've rewired this, I made it so there's absolutely no chance of feedback. So let's say I've got tape monitor on and I try to record on this one. Actually, I won't be able to do it with this tape on there. Uh, let's just try to trick this into recording. Let's push that up there, out the way, and record. Turn on the line input. And as you can see, no feedback. But let's say I want to record from the reel to reel. Well, that's pretty simple. I put this onto f line, which it's already put onto. Doesn't matter if tape monitors are on or off in this case because I'm say I want to record to this. I can start the reel to reel. And as you can see, it is coming through. Oh, that must be her right now. Onto the thing. I mean that must be her right now. And that was me doing an impression of how my voice goes sometimes when I say things. So that brings us to these two things here, the mini disc player and, well, the mini disc deck and the record player. And the mini disc player actually plays through this thing, so, because um, it's connected up to the line input on this thing, so. I don't have the line input of the mini disc connected to any of this stuff here, although I could, but I've actually got another cable going off from that where I can plug this into my computer or something else and get a nice high quality recording on mini disc same goes for the reel to reel i've also got a thing coming out from that which i could plug into a computer or what and make a nice recording on the reel to reel and of course if i want to record that onto something else like well this tape deck i could easily do so since the mini disc plays through this so i could put the mini disc on to record and then i could put this on to record and have a recording on an audio tape same goes for the um, reel-to-reel. 
I know I'm kind of jumping about a bit, but hopefully you get the gist of the thing. So anyway, here is the mini disc. Let's just play the last track on there. It's called Dude Clem's Electronic Workshop. Uh, excuse me. Welcome to Cool Dude Clem's Electronic Workshop with me, your host, Cool Dude Clem. Alright, let's just stop that now. Some people ask what was the song I used for Cool Dude Clem's Electronic Workshop. Well, play the game Simpsons Hit and Run and you'll find out. So, lastly, I thought I'd show the record player, which, as you can see, I've got open so you can see the record playing, because this can play open or closed. It does need a new needle, though, and the only trouble is, a new needle for this costs about 20 quid, and I think that's kind of ridiculous, paying that kind of money for a tiny piece of plastic and a little piece of metal. That's just ridiculous. If I lower this down onto the thing, when the camera focuses, if the camera ever decides to focus... Come on camera, you know you want to, there you go. There's the record playing. And here's the input selector. got some feedback from the microphone that I got connected to this which isn't the microphone that I'm using right now by the way the microphone I'm using right now is connected to this thing and then that's going into the computer because the microphone preamp that I built is now inside this so let's put that back to phono Well, let's record this onto the DAT. So I'll put tape monitor on. Now I'll press record on the DAT. And as you can hear, it comes through. Now I'm making a high quality 48 kilohertz digital recording on the digital audio tape. Okay, there we go. That's recorded, so I can now rewind that and play it back. And there it is. So how about recording onto this? Well, that can certainly be done. So I've got the record queued up, ready to record something. Okay, it's queued up into the middle of the song, but it's not really going to matter that much since this is just a demonstration. I've got this set so tape monitor is on, and it's set to tape A, which is this one. So, when I drop the needle down... There it is coming through the tape. And if I change the tape select while it's recording, so now it's going through the DAT instead of this thing, as you can see, the meters, I mean, the meters are not showing anything anymore. And of course, it would help if I put this on to record so the sound would come through. But that's now coming through this. If I put this on to A, it's now putting the sound through this again. And I don't think I need to play that back. Okay, so that's about it for this video. Now I would show you recording on the reel to reel and the mini disc, but of course, they're not connected to any of this stuff. Well, the inputs of those is not connected to any of this stuff. And I've waffled on too long already. And, well, that's just about it, because further left than that, well, 
where I do all my crazy electronic experiments. And some of them not so crazy. So I've shown just about all I can show, so until next time, goodbye.